Hi guys, I'm Pierre Edouard Belmar and you're watching Nasty Knuckles. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer Riley Cote as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Brigarelia? How was your Christmas? It was beautiful. Was it? Oh, yeah. Noel? Singing. Enjoy uh, no Enjoy, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I knew I saw the videos of you uh, caroling. I don't know. That was pretty cool. <laughs> door to door. You had your <clears throat> had the old djembe out. Djembe. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Old djembe. Yeah. The old um, hand drum. It goes well with the carols, you know? Like, it does. Doing Christmas it's pretty festive. I think people are a little worried when they saw that beard when they open the door, you know? Like, like <laughs> oh, whoa, where's this guy from? Just you're sharing a little holiday spirit, Max. <laughs> you a were. You were sharing spirit. it well. You were sharing it well. I'm not gonna lie. I'm glad you had a good Christmas. I did too. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Um, Take it easy. Some Elvis relaxation in. Boiled rotten. Uh, I guess a little relaxation. Nothing crazy, but no. Um, no, but it was quiet. You know, no games. Um, not many. Obviously, any NHL games for a few days. So, <clears throat> wasn't much going on. Any medicated chocolates? There were some medicated gummies <laughs> involved. There we go. And the relaxation, yes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, my daughters came over, my grandkids, and um, Christmas Eve, and had a good time. Elvis got spoiled rotten, got himself a Weston Wilson jersey, the Ooh. Phillies, yeah. And uh, Weston actually sent him a couple different things, he sent him a hat, one of his batting practice hats, autographed. That's his favorite guy, of course, because mm. I know his dad was, of course, yeah. Um, he got all kinds of stuff, so I'm awesome. sure your girls were spoiled rotten. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Got to yeah. do it. It's what happens. <laughs> it's what happens. <laughs> it's part of the process. It is part of the process. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you've been watching all the World Championship games so far. In the pre- World Juniors? Yeah, World Juniors. Oh, yeah, everyone. World Junior Championship, sorry. Yeah. Um, Every single one of them. It's. Uh, I know in Canada, for you guys, like this is – I remember when I got into pro hockey, and it was this time of year, guys were like – Going oh, yeah. back and forth, you know, the Russians and you know, the Canadians and all that stuff. And um, over the last few years, I was watching TNT last night and Liam was talking about how, you know, even for the U.S. now, more people are wanting to watch it. Yeah. You know, um, U.S. has had some success in the last few years, obviously. So um, they've started out 2-0. and I haven't got to watch too much of it, to be honest, just because Elvis is in a tournament and I've been running back and forth to the rink. But uh, U.S. and Canada are both 2 Two and zero for the Flyers fans. Cutter Gochi had four helpers today. I think they're calling them Cutter Apples. Oh yeah, <laughs> not apps. a bad, not a bad game. Yeah, not a bad game. Um, but uh, I love watching. I, I like it when it gets into playoff round. Right now, yeah. it's like, you know, you gotta. But it's one game, and anything can I happen. Know, you know, I you've know. seen it happen a million times. I actually saw a clip of way back. I think it's '87 when I had the brawl. John Slaney mm-hmm. was in right, that yeah. game. Yeah, I just see that the other Did day. Did you see it? Up, yeah. He, man, they had to turn the lights out. Then what happens though? Then you really got to be afraid. Then you got Adam Sandler, <laughs> yeah, Happy yeah, Gilmore right. coming out. <laughs> Man, like Kill you turn the, the lights out, there might sticks might start oh swinging. You God. never know. Yeah, but uh, man, that was a crazy scene. But um, anyway, mm-hmm. they're off, they're off and and started, and it's uh, it is fun to watch. Some talent, it is. Kids, you know, just kids that are playing that actually are in the NHL or playing pro. I know in the American League, so it's um it's a hell of a tournament. It's a lot of fun. Yep, I remember you know playing juniors and. Obviously, wasn't good enough to play in the World Juniors, but nonetheless, should have grabbed few... a couple guys. <laughs> I know I should have <laughs> put them on the lineup and yeah. see if I was going to be the next guy picked. That's right. Um, but uh, it was always, you know, obviously the holidays, Christmas, and then you got the World Junior tournament. And yeah, it's always you know, you sit around and watch hockey and all hours of the night. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's a good time. It's good, it is. good energy. Good, just good, good memories. I guess. Yeah, you know, for so. sure. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. Um, we got back to hockey. Mm-hmm. You know, after the holidays, there after Christmas. Had two Michies the other night, two Michigans. Hmm. One you? Kind of. One was not me. 
<laughs> in front of his uh, Connor Bedard. I'm sure everybody's seen it by now. I'm sure Baller will throw it up. And uh, Trevor's egress. Uh, how do they do that so easily? Just right under the – just pick the – like – Just the opposite of my <laughs> – well, <laughs> and me, but it amazes me how they could just slide this. I've tried that a hundred times. Just, I know all the just guys, gotta get a, a lot of guys, a little angle it. on it, get it lifted a little bit and then just Some scoop it right up. Yeah. How quick and just like under pressure, just like no big deal. <laughs> right. I mean, I can hardly even stick handle behind the net. <laughs> you were up. good back there. You were, people were calling you grats <laughs> when you got behind the net. Are you kidding? Panic. Just <laughs> oh, start, man. start the old the, uh, cycle rim. Just start from behind the net. From behind the net. I don't want it here. No, <laughs> feel uncomfortable back here. You should have just done the Ohio you play like Zegers did to Sonny Milano a couple uh, of years ago. Remember that play? Wasn't really I was thinking that way. Yeah, I, I, I I was but that's okay. You were, <laughs> your head was on a swivel, bro. Oh, yeah, swivel. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Sudafed was just oh. bouncing from brain. <laughs> I think one game I saw you do a full 360 like the exorcist on the bay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were so jacked I up. Sure where I should be. I should uh, go back to the locker room, penalty yeah. box. You don't know. Bench. Yeah. Where do I go? Where do I go? I go? Just don't know. <laughs> oh, man. You got to bring it down. You got to bring it down. Um, but th those kids, I mean, and there's other guys that can do it, but man, it just, they make it look easy. Oh, my gosh. How, how about Zegris? Well, having the reporter ask him. About doing it. I want to see one. And he pulls it off. Yeah, his first game back, and I don't know how many games. I think he asked met. her out on a date. I don't know her, so I don't want to say that she may be married, but I'm mm. kidding. But like Probably. afterwards, you got to like, all right, we got to go out on a date. Yeah, what a call. I mean, oh like to God. deliver, too. Good it's point. not just Good like asking her. for a goal. You're asking for a Michigan. You're like. asking for a Michi. <laughs> what you say, Michigan or a lacrosse style, whatever oh, they call style, it, whatever yeah, it is, yeah, but it same was. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's crazy. Who I saw someone, too. Oh, it was Jay, our buddy Jay Rosehill was saying that. He's like, uh, he goes, I can take it or leave it, but I think they're going to take it out of the game. I got to ask Rosie about that. I don't know why. He just thinks. He thinks. He thinks he, so? he, I saw it on his uh, podcast. Well, it's not illegal. No, I know, but I, I don't remember exactly the reason he thought. He just says, I, I wouldn't be surprised for a couple of years they ban that, but I, no I can't. I got to say, Rosie. I don't think they will. I mean, that's just a skill, hell of a skill. You just got to learn how to defend it. I think that's well, what the team should be focusing on. You now, see some of these youth hockey videos? Yeah, well, they're like, like, just like here's how you do it, right in the grill. Just, just chop the guy up. I mean, I I'll tell you what, Elvis is nine. He's a 2014. Last year we're playing, he's eight, and we're playing a team by uh, the Avalanche up wherever they are, up north there a little bit. <clears throat> this kid tried it twice. And he got, one of our kids, not the way I said, if he does that, I don't care up. if you take a penalty yeah. right in the back of the legs, but that's terrible to say. Yeah, but, well, but you got to defend it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, part of the game. He's like, I don't, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I mean, shouldn't you be coaching the goaltenders? I mean, I know they're supposed to be up on the strong side yeah. post, but like there is that gap. I mean, do you, do you get like, do you have to get right in that corner? Well, like? if you, it's it's funny because like usually the goalies are on their post, like they're looking and then they slide across, so they do need to get up, but like. If it happens that fast, like that you watch fast, it, like yeah, no. I, you're not up against the post yet, right? Egress, so that gap is ours, but it looked like the goalie almost got there. I can't remember which yeah. one it was, but like it was tight. You almost, as a goalie, like, you just gotta think, hey, this might happen right now because it's happening more and more. Obviously, it just happened to be two in one night, but yeah, um, it's a skillful play. A lot of guys I know can do it. I'm sure, but. I mean, the, the reality is more and more kids will be doing it because I mean, I've seen these, these skill coaches teaching kids how to do it, right? And, you know, and the, and the fact is, them, you know, some of them will be able to do it and some of them not, but right, it's always a threat now. You know, it was never, it would never be a thing back in the day. We right. didn't talk about it, but now it's like, man, you, you got to be pre scouting these guys and saying, this guy potentially could Michigan, right? Michigan, the old Mish head, head on a swiv. Yeah, you got to have it on a swivzy. Yeah. You have to. Um, our buddy Armory Auger played in his first game this year. What the hell is going on? I think. Try to sell some I don't tickets? know if they. I was gonna say I don't know if they're having a tough time um, with the team or something. Maybe he just figured I'd better start playing. Like but I thought he was Moon. playing anyway. I honestly thought, I thought that so he had too. agreed to play this year. But I guess he just played his first game. We got to get a hold of the Augs. We, we do. Got to get him. Got to get him on here. Um, talk about the longevity and it's crazy. The, the formula. You think he's in the in the, any of the gummies oh he's, he's on he's got he got oh, himself yeah. into something no i don't know he might i don't know what he does he Shoot would he would love the 
the micros. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was just, almost said something else. He would love the micros. Oh, I'm gonna go with the devil's dance. <laughs> <laughs> no, the devil's dance. Yeah, too, too intense, intense for yogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, no, seriously, the micros, <laughs> the micros, um, be in that flow state, man. More, more his style, I think. It'd be more his style. I, mean, I think. Sure. I think. Uh, you know, can cannabis gummies might be a little light for him. A little, <laughs> yeah. little You know, a little too heady. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, I, I think that was now just a little too aggressive for him. It might be a little aggressive. I think right there. Some people can't handle the PD. <laughs> no, I guess the not. double D's. <laughs> I, I love you double back D's. In the day with I love double D's. Yeah, yeah. I know oh, you meant double standard. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Double D's, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. Speaking of older gentlemen, don't want to call them old, but uh, Nikolai Habi Bulin. Wow. 50 years I haven't old. haven't heard his name forever, and he's back. Well, we it. used to say, we got to get a Nikolai Cabby Bulin. Bulin. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> says that. Uh, but man, 50 years old and, and he's going to play, I guess. He was a goaltending. I think coach. he was just tired of his goaltenders. He said they're not good. Boys, I can do this, and I'm 50. So I guess we'll Push him aside, become your own coach, and you're in there. I hate my coach, but I'm going to play. He's strong coach. Strong strategy there. Yeah, bold move, Cotton. Yeah, definitely bold. Watch that. Good style. Did you? Yeah. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Oh, what a a classic. Classic Classic movie. I mean, I'll just watch it. I don't think he got most of it. But anyway, um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I'm wondering if he's he's signed, so I, I guess that means... He might play a few games. I don't know if he signed as be a backup or what, but uh, we'll find out. Emergency but I thought backup. that was crazy. No, I know. I was crazy years old. Good that. for him. Yeah, must be somewhat limber. He can't be just like well, signing PTOs be. and contracts. Well, look at Hedgehog. He's fifty. Look at him in the men's league. Yeah, I know he's pretty. I mean, we have to help him up. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, man, wow, that's pretty pretty amazing. I'd yeah. like to see if he does play a game. I'm sure, he will. You think, signed, you think so. he's more stand up or he's probably not going down? Pete Peters, he's 20 feet <laughs> yeah. out from the net. <laughs> Just please don't go down. Yeah, don't, please go, don't down. go down. <laughs> don't make a move either. Yeah, I know, right? Screwed. Right at the crest. But uh, yeah, man, there hadn't been much going on, like I said. So I think it's about that time. It's about that time to ask. Let's do it. Episode 140 with her good friend, Pierre Edward Belmar. Yes, Beauty. P.E. Belmar. Belly. All right. Great guy. Here we go. All right, Riggs. You got to step into 2024 with confidence. Thanks to Manscaped, where resolutions are met and hairs are neatly kept. Make a rhyme every time for you, brother. Oh, yeah. That's what it means. As the new year approaches, why not make self-improvement a breeze by keeping your body well-groomed? I ask Riley this question every day. I'm going to do this, though. I'm going to introduce to you Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, the ultimate all-inclusive kit designed to help you feel clean cut and confident as you should. Oh yeah. Featuring the Powerhouse Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, this next gen trimmer ensures precision and ease when tackling your toughest hairs. So Riggs, kick off 2024 with a trim above the rest and use code nasty at manscape.com for 20% off and free shipping. Oh man, Nast, what a deal. It's a deal. Can you believe it? I can. These guys are unbelievable. What was the highlight of 2023 and what are you looking forward well, to? Well, the highlight of 2023 is me shaving your beard before the year ends and looking at you in 2024 as a new man. Oh, that's bold, Nash. You know? Are you going to rock the performance package 5.0 Ultra or what? I'm going to have to to get through that stuff you got <laughs> yeah, going yeah. there. You might wanna, <laughs> Top and you, bottom. You might want to crank up the battery <laughs> life on that. It's going oh, to yeah. require some time. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra is here, and let me tell you, it's got futuristic tendencies. Included in this bundle is the brand new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the Weed Whacker 2.0 Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, and the essential aftercare products like the Crop Soother Ball Aftershave Lotion and the Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant and two free gifts. Can you well, believe it? I, I can believe it, and that Ball Aftershave Lotion, whew, to die for also have to mention, Riggs, that it's waterproof, too, which oh. means there's no excuse. Get no in the excuses, shower yes. and trim it up, buddy. Yeah. Is Down where, below. Is that where you trim? Yeah, oh, you trim it. Well, it's got to be waterproof for you to do that. And it's waterproof. New year, new you, and definitely a new trimmer. Manscaped's got your grooming resolutions covered. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code NASTY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. And use code NASTY. Happy New Year. To your balls. Yes. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Settlemeyer. This week, Riggs, 
I'm so happy. We finally tracked this guy yes. down. He's a busy man. One of my favorite guys we ever had here in Philadelphia. Class act. A veteran of 689 games. And I'm going to tell you why that's it's a huge number either way, but I'm going to tell you really why it is in a minute. Please welcome to the show, Pierre, Edward, Belmar, Belly. What's up, my brother? Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Uh, Oh yeah, man. You're the man. Yeah. We, uh, we've been, the people have been asking and I'm like, I'm trying this guy. <laughs> who are the people? I need to know uh, who all, are the, they. all the people. I might need man. to send him a Jersey. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, man, we appreciate your time. We know how busy you are. Family, uh, obviously work with hockey and everything. So, uh, um, Riles had a question though. Um, he saw in the ticker that he saw your name and it said LBI four to six. He said he's on vacation, Long Beach Island. Four shots. And, no, I believe that's a lower body injury. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, he asked me, he said, what, Long Beach Island? I said, no, I don't think that's what, I don't think that's what that <laughs> that's not what it means. But uh, sorry to see you. You know, you're on the shelf for a few weeks there, bud. Uh, yeah, get a well. more. Yeah. Yeah. I got shirt by the GM this morning. He said, you're still milk milking it? And I was like, <laughs> come on. It's been eight days. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure he knows you're one guy that wouldn't be doing that. That's for sure. Um, I really want, I wanted to say quickly uh, to, to start off, like what I said, 689 games, which is impressive for anyone. Yeah. But it's real impressive when you come to the league, when you're 29 year old rookie. <laughs> I mean, Not did you, I mean, thinking back to the, to then, and I was fortunate enough to be with the team then when, and meet you and become buddies. Um, did you ever think, holy cow, no. that many games in the NHL? I would, I would have never even considered a, a full first year, first of all. <laughs> oh, I was please. I like, no, but it was like, in a way, like, you know, when I, I, I came with the Flyers, it was like, all right. Like they were like, Hexy was really good with me. He was like, we're respecting the fact that you are willing to even take a chance to make a team because it's, it's an uncertain future for you here with us. But like, we're respecting that. And, and they had kind of like, you know, we need this, 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 and this from you. And I was like, well, I think I can do that. But then I never thought that this will go on into like a 10 year time in this league, wherever all the places that I've played and all the people I met and, all those relationships, like, I mean, this is just mind-boggling. Knowing that I am from France, right? That's right. the biggest thing. Like, this is not a normal thing. Like, this was not supposed to be my path, in a way. Right. I've, I've mm -hmm. been told that so many times, right? So that's what's making it even crazier. Now, I'm sitting at 600 and whatever it is, because this is just mind-boggling. Still, to this day, I still like, like, the same... Like day we were together on the cab back to the New York from the New York pregame skate where the bus both bus had left and I was on my own and everybody was like what is he doing and I was just on the ice too long it's still the same I'm enjoying every single moment man that's awesome yeah Good I was I was gonna say I was telling Riles uh, a little bit about you and and uh, I said there's just a guy that was it was so refreshing. And you're, I know you're not the only guy like that. Like, I know, Riles, you were the same way, yeah. but just so yeah. grateful for the chance. And then to be there every day, like, Belly always came to the rink, always with a smile on his face, even if things were shitty, like, you know, we weren't having a great year, whatever. But uh, you're just always so fun to be around and happy. And it's 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 so nice to have that in, in players, you know, and, and you, the appreciation you had for yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks, man. I think, I think that, like, my – like tough way to come up to the top kind of created that naturally you know like with like a few words there and there from different people my mom different mentors there and there but i think like you know to I think when you come in this league and you're 18 years old right and you're about to make your million buck and like 10 years later you're 28 which was still earlier than when i came by that time i come in the league and those guys are 28 and they're like oh, another game, or oh, this bus take too long, or this flight take too long. Not realizing I was in the bus to go to Slovenia for 24 hours, <laughs> like, two years right. before, right? So, right. Like, so then, because I've had, like like we said back in the Caribbean, like, you know, I, I ate my, 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 my brown bread, like, way earlier, then I can enjoy my white bread later. This is like a way that we say, like, you know, in France and everything. Yeah. And I feel like because I came so late, it kind of help me to be even more thankful all of that because you know yeah. I've, I've had the bad salary i've had the tough time the injuries losing the cup all of that back yeah. in europe already yeah so when i came to the nhl everything is just bonus really right yeah yeah so like coming in the morning and be sour because we lost the game 
yesterday. That was yesterday. What are you yeah. going to do today to That's make right. it better, right? And right. like positive has always been a contagious thing. So I was figuring out instead of being the guy that just follow the path and be negative with like the group, you know, which is really easy. When somebody mm -hmm. comes and says the weather is shit, well, yeah, it is. Everybody goes into the weather is shit. Yeah, it is. And then if you have the one guy that is like, well, actually, you know what? It's better than yesterday. Then yeah. you tend to hate the guy in the beginning, but like, you know, after a couple of months, you were happy that this guy is there kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That's, for sure. kind, of, that's kind of me in a nutshell a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, lo I love that attitude. Obviously, it's it served you well and it can continue to yeah. serve you, uh, you know, for the rest of your life. It's 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 amazing to hear. And, you know, your first year, you were on a two way contract. You played 81 games. You know, it's yeah. like, you know, for you to take that shot and come over is like obviously risky, ballsy, whatever you want to say. But uh, obviously, you know, you have to believe in yourself enough to take that yeah. risk. And, you know, your attitude obviously speaks for itself. So, Oh, man, and here we are, you know, 10, yeah. you know, 10, ten, ten, ten years later. Player, yeah, it's man. pretty, it's pretty impressive. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it was weird because like when I came, I remember telling my mom, like, you know what, do one year. Like he wasn't in the plan. And then with my wife, we were like, all right, after that, we go to Russia and, you know, ching, ching, you know, yeah, just for yeah. one or two years. <laughs> then, we, <laughs> then we go downhill from that, um, <laughs> not knowing that I was going to be here. Like, and I think that's also one of you know, the thing that probably helped me because in my mind, it wasn't all right, I'm here to stay. It was more like every day compete, making sure they understand that, you know, this is not the normal thing. Like show them that you want to stay in a way. Yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. that kind of, that, that kind of helped. Like, you know how it is like at camp, everybody tries hard and then come October, November, it's being season. So everybody's kind of, you know, kind of like young spring, like, you know, crazy about it. And then you you guys start to get out the locker room faster, get out mm -hmm. the ice faster, not being with the goalie anymore because everything is going well. They get their points and everything. And in that time, I just try to stay even keel. Like, you know, all right, do your extras. Because when it comes to January, that's when everybody starts being like, you know, head down and like, oh, everything is tough. But then the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you party, everything kind of affects you, right? Yeah. And on the other hand, I would just go kill, 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 even kill. And then from January on, I'd be like an important player because I would be reliable when everybody started to be unreliable in a way. Yeah, right. 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 So great point. that was kind of my way to to make myself not in, like necessary, but at least like the coach would always know, right, at least I have this guy. I know what I'm getting from him night in and yeah. out. Like, yeah. I don't have to worry about sure. this guy, like how he's going to deal with himself. So. Yeah, yeah, super important. That's the Wiley veteran right that there. Is. That's the Wiley vet. Yeah, <laughs> that reminds me of uh, my well, my first centerman in the NHL was Jimmy Dowd. Yep. You know, 20, yeah. 20 years, this guy, essentially fourth line centerman his whole career. And and it reminds me exactly of you, the way you're describing yourself and your preparation is everything. He was always the first guy at the rink. He loved to be there. And uh, the way he took care of himself allowed him to play yeah. that long, right? And he yeah. knew, the coach knew exactly what you were going to get every night from from jimmy and and, and you're, yeah. you're similar you know you obviously the, you know, you're back with hack you know in yeah. seattle there yeah. you know someone yeah. believes in you right and totally. knows exactly what they're going to get out of you and it's uh it's, it's it goes a long way yeah it's and also insane. like i've i was lucky because like i said like i mean that was, like, it was 20 years for me yeah. it's 10 yeah. so i got here so late that when i got in the league like i mean let's be honest like we had a team like it was not like what I was used to, like, you know, good time was good times. And yeah. so like <laughs> when I got as a rookie, everybody expect, you know, well, the rookie, we're going to take him out. But then I would be like, Hey boys, I'm older than you guys. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. You can't do that. Like yeah. I have to, like, I, I can't, I can't do some during the year, but most of the time I won't be able to be a part of it because otherwise it's just going to, I'm going to put myself out of this team, like in no time. Yeah. And like, like, you know, I was with Lots my rookie year and Lots was like, if he said that he would get shrouded. Like, yeah. He, right. Yeah. Like he was not allowed to like, he not fold the guys, but me, they were like, well, belly, like you, you're already 30. Like just go to bed. Yeah. You know? yeah, right. go to so bed. Be, we'll tuck you be, in. Yeah. They'd be like, <laughs> they'd be so nice with me because of my age. Right. Which I think if you're a younger player, it's a way mm -hmm. tougher situation. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, the peer pressure is real. Yeah, for sure. sure. I know. Real. I know. One night, Belly, we 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 had a bit of a night when I took you to see Buck Cherry. Remember that? Oh, that, was, that was. That he was, loved that was, it, Riggs. I bet. 
my shoulder surgery that was unexpected yeah he was like, like this I was is like, really good yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. but you, you took me out there and i was like what, what so what did they sing and you're like oh it's gonna be rock and i'm like what do you mean rock and i was <laughs> yeah. like you know when i get was like no hard no rock no hard rock no country music right, right remember that right. yeah and then, and then i get in that and he starts and i'm like mm. Mm. and you look at me like wait you, you don't like it and it's like Ah, not my stuff. And in five minutes' time, I was jumping all over the place. <laughs> yeah, we're he liked it. His, you know how good oh, Josh he, Todd he is on stage. Her, yeah. yeah, so he. he had, I still uh, tell that story every, now, like, every <laughs> time. Like this is the song comes in locker room. I said, like, "Oh, I saw those guys live." <laughs> I was like, "What? That doesn't sound like you." He said, "Oh yeah, but I was there." <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I was there. Yeah. So that was awesome. Yeah, it was great, man. Um, so, so you were talking a little bit about like when you played in France and you played in Sweden. How many languages do you speak, by the way? So I think three. I know the answer. You do speak three. Yeah, three. I do yeah. three. I took German when I was in back in school. Like that was actually my number one language. And I I, I left it <laughs> just before all my exam. I was allowed to do that because I was like inside, whatever. I, yeah. I left it. So I think if I go to Germany, like I could probably, you know, easily, not easily, but quite fast find myself around. Oh, okay. But then same with Spanish. Oh, okay. But it's yeah. like it's like it's not fluent in any case. It's just like you drop me there really fast. I would like pick it up. But then I did the same with Swedish anyway. So uh, yeah, um, I, I remember that. Just I reminded me. I uh, I remember one game. I I want to say it was Baxter, but it may have been someone else. But you said something in Swede to him, and they they jerked their head around. Yeah. Uh, yeah I can't yeah. remember. Was it Baxter? I can't remember. Yeah, you, it might have been. It, I mean, it was one time it was Zetterberg. Oh, okay. Okay. Where they looked like me, like I was an alien. And one time, <laughs> yeah, I did yeah. or oh, Headman, too. I did it okay. to Headman. Because, like, those guys, some of them that have been in the league in the States for so long, didn't really have big knowledge of like the Swedish league. Yeah. So then you realize I played eight years there, right? Right. Mm. So that when I got into the NHL, like, anytime I could like chirp somebody in Swedish or <laughs> they would just look at me like, Kind of like, uh, yeah. I, I thought <laughs> you were French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's <laughs> awesome. Terrible. I remember that. I remember that. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, but uh, leading up to, to you signing in Philly, like it was like basically what you said, a pretty big decision to make for you. Yeah, it was. Like it was, we had, uh, so before the whole playoff started back in Europe, that year I had a, I had a hot year. And before playoff, Montreal came, right? Montreal was like, came and I met the assistant GM and, it was weird because, like, you know, shook my hand, like, all right, you're one of our players. And then after the World Championship, which our line, you know, I don't know if you remember, but that was that year we actually uh, went all the way to quarterfinal and we beat Canada. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. year, like, our line was was hot. Right. We were, like, those two guys, I, I was playing with Roussel and Da Costa, and they were hot, so I just mm. surfed on that wave, and I looked good, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but at the end, right after... Uh, I think it was Chris Pryor. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That talked to Exy, and I was like, "Hey, we should we should really look into this guy for our fourth line." And then they kind of start talking to me, but like Montreal was really, you know, one way kind of. It was like, "Well, we need you to take a spot on the fourth line." And I was asking, like, "Okay, can I have a chance of taking a spot on the third line? Can I play PK? Like all of those situations that I could be helpful for the team?" And they were like, "Nope, we just need you to." Try to get a spot for the fourth line, and your ice time would be low because you would only play on the fourth line when the fourth line got on the ice. It was kind of closed. I could feel like, okay, I don't see like a possibility there. Right. And on the other hand, Xy, like it was literally you hang up with one, you talk to the next one, and Xy was like, hey, like we need you, we need our fourth line to have more speed. We need them to be more reliable. We need you to. to can you play PK? And I was like, yeah, I mean, PK is blocking shot and reading plays. I can do those two. Yeah, and so I felt like you know if you play better in the third line, then you guys are gonna play better in the third line. Even if the third line, there was no chance of me taking a spot on it. At least it gave me a bone to you know to try right. to work for it, right? Right. So it felt much more natural to go with them. And then the last thing was obviously my wife being half American, like going to Canada would be impossible for her to work. Oh, she's yeah. not the kind of hockey wife. Like she's not the kind of sitting around. She does not stand that. So she yeah. needed to work and everything. So yeah. when we decided which team, that played a huge role. And then one mm -hmm. of my childhood friends from France was also living in Philly at the time. 
Oh, yeah. oh wow! So I was like, "Oh my God, this guy's gonna spend the time of his life with me." <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So it was a risky play, but also it was, you know, I have all the support. My mom at the time was just like, "Just leave, just try it." Like try you're 29. It, yeah. Well, what's the worst that can happen? You come back. Yeah, and I had <laughs> I had a cla- like a, a clause in my contract to leave before December to go back to Europe. Okay, you know the usual sweet cla- clause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But then I got told very fast. I think it was my agent that was like, "Hey, just don't do that because that just looks bad. Oh, like, okay. just stay a year, like, just use it as an experience, and then come back. You still be as valuable when you come back." Yeah, yeah. But eventually, I I never had to even worry about it. That's right. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. What was it like growing up in France, hockey wise? I mean, you think of like hockey culture in Canada and in U.S. It's, obviously, it's got to be night, so different. Night and day. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's not like there is no really a. A culture of hockey first mm-hmm. of all like the culture of sport is nowhere near the same as in north america where like you know here you have all those college and high school and sport is a part of the education you use yeah. sport to you know to sometimes to educate back home is is like it's all about school so for me every single year until i turn 16 when i moved out of my house so you have you know you have meetings with with the, the teacher at the end of the year like to see if the, the kid is going up or is staying in the same class, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for me, from the time I started hockey, which was six and a half years old, to the time I turned 16, every single year my mom got told to to make me stay in that class and then quit hockey. And then I'd be a oh, better wow. student. Even if I was above average in, like, in, in class, I'd never been under. I was always above average. But still, wow. they would always like, because the, the, the mindset is, uh, you know, why are you doing that sport? This is not going to give you a living. Just right. quit that thing, spend more time educating yourself. That's how, mm-hmm. unless you're a soccer player. And then yeah. Like, yeah. 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 But like no more hockey, realistic. yeah, hockey in the newspaper when I was a kid was the last page of a sport newspaper, like the last, you know, little square <laughs> at the yeah. end, bottom right. That's what it was. You would see like the scores of the whole months, like put into like, you know, like many, yeah. many things. Yeah. And then you would have hockey every four years. You would have figuring uh, hockey at the Olympics, right? You would see yeah. kind of a game or half a game because it was cut in the middle for figuring skating. This yeah. Which, well, yeah. I have a lot of anger against figuring skating. I think it's because of that <laughs> childhood trauma. Yeah, yeah, trauma, yeah. <laughs> but I so, game. yeah, but so hockey was like the NHL was never a dream because it's not something possible. That's what you get told your whole life. And you, at the time, no internet, you know, it was, you couldn't even see it. But right. the Olympics was always a dream. Right. Wow. That's awesome. So it's I a different cool. mindset than the kids going to the ice, you know, every day of the week. And in the winter, you go on outdoor ice. No, I had like one practice a week until I turned 11. And then when I turned 11, I came to Insane. Paris. And then I had three practice a week. Uh, and then like summertime, there's no hockey. And there is no hockey anywhere outside. It doesn't exist, right? Yeah, so I, I feel like uh, we were talking one time, and you were telling me uh, your mom and basically was ready to pull her hair out because you were playing in the house. And uh, oh yeah, you had just <laughs> holes in the wall. Shit. So my 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 brother and I, my brother is four years older, yeah. and he also played hockey, and he had the same kind of like the path that I had, like you know, the youngest player to ever play in his generation as a pro, okay. like. But then, so when we were a kid, the competition was fierce. Obviously, he was older than me, but because of him, I learned so much quicker everything, right? And I was a little bit more skillful than him. So there would be always like, you know, some pushing and hitting and everything. And the sticks (laughs) were flying around. And uh, we we wouldn't, we like those plastic pucks that you get here. Like now, they didn't exist by the day. So you play with real pucks if you had a chance to steal one at the rink. Or yeah. or like the bouncy balls were always, you know, big gamers. Yeah. But those bouncy balls would go and they would never stop bouncing. It's like a cartoon. And they would hit absolutely everything before they finally stand still. So oh my mom my would gosh. yell at us. Like, it would be like, I'm going to cut your stick. We would start crying because don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't cut our core revolution we got from Santa. Don't do yeah. that. <laughs> right. Core yeah. revolution. That's right. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I remember you telling me that. It's great. Um, did you? Uh, we were talking about this earlier. You had Chief the one year, um, yeah, at Craig Berube as a coach. Yeah, uh, and love then, them. 
yeah, he's such a such a good man. Um, I just saw him the other day. He's back in town. Uh, <clears throat> he's uh, he just lives in, up in New Hope there. So yeah. I saw him the other day. But uh, you had Hack obviously for for two years, I, I believe, and now you're back yeah. with him. Um, yeah, he obviously wanted you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's he yeah he. I mean, I was uh, I was one of the guy that was called like when they did the the expansion draft as a free agent. Yeah. So I knew that there was an interest. Um, I had a great time with him. I mean, he's the first coach in the league that gave me an A on the jersey. Yeah. Mm. Sure when did. like you know there was like Coots was like there was a bunch of guys that probably deserved it more than me, but I was more maybe like you know doing the right stuff at the time maybe you know well, that's exactly why you got yeah. it because you yeah, should have you could because you should have had it so and then like i mean that trust you know for me like coming and like putting me on top of all those guys and suddenly helping me having a bigger voice right and then when i when i got it and at the end of the season that year that it was like all right i liked what you gave us i like the way you talked i like the way you play you play but we're going to need more of all of that next year because there was a younger group coming and I was like, all right, excited. And then the expansion draft came and obviously yeah. I got picked. Uh, Did- so that was kind of like, but I had no issue. I mean, I love chief because he was straightforward, old school. If yeah. you play like shit, you hear it, you play good, you hear it. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, simple, yeah. um, no, no problem of going at big guys and bad guys and younger guys. Like everybody's treating kind of the same way I felt. Yeah. Um, hack, obviously a lot of respect. Give me my a, my a so you know yeah big up <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, yeah exactly and you know what's funny <laughs> like, we've we've talked about this before belly and you, and you can probably talk on it he he wasn't like really loved in philly like i i always no. tell people ask me and i'm like you know this guy's first of all a great person great guy yeah. i thought yeah. he was a really good cut it's still obviously he's a very good coach but all he he was too like stoic on the bench and riley and i've talked about i'm like well you guys don't see when he comes underneath if he's yeah. not happy him walking in the room mm-hmm. and yeah do you want your and riley it's a great point by riley riley goes do you want your coach losing his fucking mind every time no that's the thing you know, <laughs> but i like, feel like i feel like maybe like in philly that's probably what they wanted <laughs> yeah they wanted entertainment they didn't want to compose yeah they didn't yeah. want to compose maybe coach they wanted more yeah. you know like those Russian videos when you see the coach throwing chairs on the on the yeah. ice because it doesn't <laughs> yeah. go well, like and they we like, had a guy yeah. do that, yeah. you know. Yeah. And yeah. and don't get me wrong, I love the Philly fans, but in that instance, I think that maybe they were not right in the way that like because when you would come back to the locker room, you could see when it was bad. Trust me. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. He's not the kind of guys that are gonna you know shoot the can and everything, but he's gonna let you know. Um, so, but like I think in Philly, like you know the sassiness of a coach and all of that it's welcome much more than it is if you're a composed person i think yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah i agree john, St- john stevens was in that same camp right i mean the people were kind of like well why is this guy so composed on the bench and you know they, they couldn't understand the ability to manage his emotions right it's like a, it's like a foreign yeah. thing almost right <laughs> so they they almost say they, they would they would say it was like a, a detriment or it yeah. was like a negative but i'm like mm-hmm. i'm thinking i'm like i learned so much from johnny being like under pressure you know being emotional guy and then being able to stand there yeah, and absolutely. show some composure i mean it's like there's, there's so much strength there that people just uh, they'd almost rather see that you become un- unhinged and lose your shit break something yeah. Just because it probably just satiates their, you know, their emotions. Yeah, I think maybe they than, think that yeah. you're checked out because you're like, right. oh, you already give up in a way, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I, I remember seeing that in the newspaper. Yeah. Like third yeah. year, like there was a lot of talk about him giving up on the team or, oh, and, was, and it was, was just, yeah. but that was because like he wasn't showing his emotions out there to the right. media, right? Uh, yeah. But that was never the case. I mean, you don't I, see him being there like at seven o'clock when we arrive at nine thirty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah no, right. exactly. Yeah. He, I, I love Hack. I, we got the last year. We, uh, one of our uh, big sponsors is a, a company called their uh, Fans of Philly, and they're a sports travel agency. And they and uh, we go on a couple trips, and we went to Seattle last year, so we got to run into Hack. It was really good to see him and talk to him for a little bit. So we saw where at your practice rink, and then we went to the game as well. Yeah. Uh, what a building, by the way! Wow, it's nice, huh? Oof, yeah, it's like, a, wow, cool design. Top state of the art. I mean, yeah. you're talking about yeah. 
I, I went in and bought a couple drinks, Belly, and one of the things. And I, I was like, where do I pay? They're like, oh, you already got you when you put your, uh, I put my uh, the card the card that, as you walk in. They're like, it it scans it, so you're good. And I'm like, how does it know what I got? Like, what if I put something <laughs> in my pocket? Goes, oh, they know. Oh, oh they, they know. know. Oh, they know. Oh, they know. I, I was like, what the fuck is going oh, on? Yeah. I thought that was cool. Well, right? AI action. Yeah, AI action. Yeah. Um, so you, you brought it up a, a minute ago. Um, you end up going, you get picked in the in the draft there for Las Vegas. And uh that first year I remember getting to see you. I was so excited to see you. And I remember even when you came back, Elvis was just so excited to see you. Uh, but what a magical re- year. Like that you was guys, crazy. Yeah, I mean, it was insane. Like from was, the very beginning, like you know, like where you get into the like you get picked and you don't really expect, know what to expect, right? Because it's a new franchise. It was a long time. It's late in Las Vegas. All you hear is people asking you, you know, like, where do you live on the strip? And you're also thinking like, am I going to live on the freaking strip? Because <laughs> like, where? Cause like and then you start learning about the communities and where people live and like, you know, how big it is. Because it's like so many, it's like 2.8 or whatever it is, million. It's a big yeah. city. Yeah. And so you're like, okay getting excited and you come there and then the team was brand new and brand new like in a way that they were like trying to get the best person for the job not just in the locker room but also front office and like you know so the team was hungry to to do new stuff compared to what has been done in hockey traditional right yeah but the filming was like oh we were filming for next year and we're like this is mind-boggling for us right it's everything was different and but the people had no clue we were Right, they didn't really know who we were. Everybody was excited. You didn't see any logo really anywhere. Uh, and then, in a matter of by the time that we arrived there for camp, like I remember, I didn't have my car I was shipped from Philly to to Vegas, so I took Ubers, right? Yeah. And then I w- and like people would have like you know stickers or hat in the back, like Golden Knights or little thing like from their mirror. And I'd be like, okay, this is the address and the. Uh, the, the the practice facility didn't have a name because it wasn't finished, right? Oh, yeah. Not they wasn't have a gate. They had just like a boom. Like it, nothing was fully fully down, right? So people would drop me, and I was like, oh, just tell the guard that you're dropping a player, and they're like, a player? Like as we walk into the, the parking lot, and they're like, yeah, like this is uh, what is this? It's oh, this is uh, a hockey rink. Oh, cool. That's not the one for uh, the Knights, right? I said, yeah, it is. <laughs> what? You play yeah. for the Knights, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I am." Like, and I said, so it was it was growing like slow. You could tell, like, you could see more and more license plates with the Golden Knights thing, and yeah, it was coming. And then October first happened. Yeah, right. We yeah. played our first game, seventeen thousand people on a preseason game. Nuts! It's like it's playoff. Everybody, I I didn't play that game. I remember being like, I was, you know, you like you consider a veteran as soon as you pass above a certain age. Yeah, so yeah. when I got to Vegas, I was already considered a veteran, right? Yeah. And I was like, you know what, veterans, you guys are not going to play. Like, you're going to play four out of eight or maybe five out of eight. Like, you're not going to play all too many games. So I was like, oh, yeah, cool, awesome. And then uh, oh, we have a game on the road and a game at home. You, you don't play any of them. We keep you for later. I'm like, oh, sick. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. And then I got to the rink. And I'm like, I want to play this game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? And it, was, yeah. it was like, and then it was buzzing. And then we go, we're supposed to go to that concert. Oh my God. But like the player, like it was late for me. Hannah was uh, pregnant with Leander. Yeah. So we're like, she was like, I need to go back to the hotel. I'm like, cool. We go back. Then guys, couple, like I think five guys went to eat somewhere instead of going to that concert. Yeah. And then, like at ten o'clock, we received like our phones. We like all the, you know, Facebook. Make sure you're safe. So yeah. I remember like just looking at the like at all, put the TV on and see like shooting of two people in Las Vegas. That's all it, you know. That's all it was put on the news. Yeah. So it was like two people. Like I lived in Philly. That's nothing, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then, like, yeah. Went to sleep. Wake up the next day. Yeah. 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 And wake up the next day, and it's like fifty something people mass shooting. And like you could tell, the whole town was gloomy. Everybody was like, "It hurt, right?" Yeah, yeah. And so we went the next two days to like you know hospital, blood bank. So I was one of the guy in a group of a hospital. We get to the hospital with our jerseys, and like nobody have any clue who we are really, right? Yeah. But as we're doing the visit, 
like people are getting more and more excited and, and you can tell like i remember thinking like it's my fourth year in the league like you know what can i do to help because like there is there is hundreds of thousands of people that are outside there giving food and you know and i'm here getting jerseys giving like me my time and i was like and then it was one of the women her daughter had like a, that was a triple that was a third uh, heart surgery a bullet had launched herself in the wrong spot oh god and during that five seven minutes i talked to her she didn't talk about anything else than like how excited she was for mm. the hockey to be in town and her daughter to be able to see hockey and on the way out of there this is where it was kind of a big you know this is what you can do you spend time for five seven minutes she didn't think about the problem at say she could talk about something else and it was crazy and then the we went on to finish that was the end of the camp we went on to um to uh to the first game of the season that was on the road and i remember like coaches and gm and everybody coming and telling like this is not about us i don't care that we are uh, a brand new team i don't care that it's like inaugural season this is not about our team or our players or who score it's all about the town hmm. The yeah. town is hurting. You guys playing is going to help the town. And as soon as they left, everybody in the locker room was like, all right, guys, like we need this. Like we need it more than the other team. Let's play that way. So we start being like some kind of grinders. You know, we just worked yeah. as, as, as hard as we could. And we won the game. And I don't know if you remember that Dallas uh, celebration. It was like we won the Stanley Cup. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. crazy. We were so happy, but not because we won that game, more about what it meant. Yeah. And not catch on. Like already from that first night, everybody back home was like, you know, the nights is the, the three hour window where I can smile, I can talk to my friends. And we kind of, that created the basis for our team. This is the yeah. foundation. Now we cannot go to like be selfish and all of that. It has to be that amount of work. And we surf on that wave. Like, you know, every time we get credit back from the, the town, we work even harder so the town feel even better and like before you know it it's January and you're like we're number one in the league what's going on here yeah you know, guys and we have no superstar beside flurry right right so it was kind of like it was amazing man that's wild that's crazy I, I never made the connection or, or never thought to make the connection to yeah. that I mean that that, uh, that tragedy that tragedy unfortunately made all of us the player mature faster than we would have mm. yeah because you had no choice like yeah, right. we went to the hospital we went to all of the different places like we were hurting we all came saying you know like this is our community because you know it sounded better right but then during the shooting after the shooting this like it came a real thing this is our community we have to defend it this is the thing that made us be like okay we are vegas born right we are yeah this is us mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's crazy well, well, good for you. It's turning something so tragic into something so positive, right? I mean, and, and I mean uplifting the spirits. I mean, it's, what else can yeah. you do, right? I mean, you did exactly what you guys could do as a as a team unit. And, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, it, it worked. I mean, and then like, I, I mean, we were talking so many times. Okay, when is this gonna stop? Because at one point, you like, we're like, who are we fooling? <laughs> You know, like uh, this is like I, I played in, in in Philly. I know how hard it is to get to the playoff. Yeah. And then like here we have a team with no one of those those superstars, and we're like well in playoff, well before it's time yeah. to actually have a playoff push. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, what is what is going on, kind of right? So. Uh, I, and you guys won game one too in the finals, if I'm not mistaken. Were which was the are... biggest problem. Yeah, you think mm. so? Yeah. As a if I can wear, give my word of wisdom as a veteran. Yeah. This <laughs> was, this is the reason why we lost the final. Really. There is two reasons. One is I think every single series we were the underdog. We got crushed by the media. Like, like you know, six yeah. out of seven expert uh, LA is winning. Seven out of seven, Winnipeg is winning. Five yeah. out of seven, like freaking uh, the Sharks are winning. Every single time we were the underdog. And I kind of piss us off. Yeah, yeah. And then we come to the final and then suddenly it's like five, five out of seven, Vegas is winning. Yeah, and I think I do think that at one point it might have like you know when and also first season first time historical go to the final yeah a lot of guys had like so many people coming in town 
I do think that it's tough to like to not talk about what do you do if if you get the cup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When those people are there for just two, three days, you know, they're gonna ask you like, Oh, I can't wait. You know, suddenly I think you become a little bit bigger than 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 yourself and then mm-hmm. the team. No offense to anybody in the team, but this right, is, I right. think this is what unconsciously happened. And then the game one, we actually played bad. Right? And you want we, anyone the game. We won the game. And I feel like you lose that game, then suddenly you're like, Well, we played bad, we lose. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. we play better, we have a chance to win. But instead it was the opposite. It was kind of like, you know, ha, huh, we play like we played bad and we won the game. Think what can happen if we play good. Yeah. 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 Right. Like a little bit and we went on to to lose four straight. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. And we yeah. couldn't figure it out. They figured out a way to beat our goalie. Yeah. Uh, by passing because everybody was trying to throw themselves to block the shots. And oh, yeah. Before you know it, like this went like this. It went fast. Like it went, yeah. Later. It does go fast too. Like yeah. And then the it, second it game, up. like that, uh, we were the better team by far, and they were hanging on to thread, but they score more. And then yeah. at the end of the game, Holby made a, an absolute amazing save. Yeah. And that were like that kind of where like you start hearing the media, oh Vegas lost the puck lock and everything. Yeah. And I don't read media during any of those moments. But I can hear it in locker room guys talking about it. So yeah, and I feel like when when you reach the locker room, you kind of halfway screwed a bit. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. That was, that was the first loss. That one hurt. <laughs> that one, yeah, that one hurt. Um, two two good seasons there, man. And I remember oh. talking to you, and you and you loved where you lived. And you loved yeah. all of it, right? It was just like yeah, so everything was absolutely amazing. So, like it was as easy to live in Vegas than it was when I'm in. In Sweden, in summer, in my little town of seventy thousand people, wow. really? like it was that easy. Like, and the weather obviously was amazing. Yeah. So everything, like you know, you're you're in fl- you're in flip flop most of the time. Winter is doesn't go under like I don't know fifty five. Uh, <laughs> I can deal with that. <laughs> yeah, I can know, deal like, with that. So That's no, it was it was, and the people were so excited about us. So like, I mean, let's be honest, it was. I'm not kind of person, you know how I am like the yeah. first year, like I didn't want to get free stuff because yeah. I felt like it was wrong. Mm-hmm. But, like in Vegas, the amount of time where like it was one every th- three, I think. Yeah. One every three dinner, I would, I would, uh, I would ask for the, the check and they'd be like, Oh, it's already paid by like, who? Oh, the lady that sat beside you or, or the wow. owner or the man. And I, I, one time I went, it was a young girl, like 22 years old. And she paid for our dinner with my with Hannah, and we had ec- order order extra for the kids for uh, next lunch. <laughs> wow, yeah, yeah. no way! And like that woman paid, and, and I went to see her, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, I I can't pay. Like, thank you so <laughs> much. I I can't pay." And she was like, "Oh, just thank you for your service. Thank you for everything you do for the town." Oh, I'm awesome. like, in my head, you're just a hockey player. I just yeah. I go wake up and I do the best thing I know, and I'm just happy doing it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So that whole year was just you didn't have to try to be the mayor to become the mayor, really. Yeah, like, right. Everybody was excited to get a piece of you in any case, any way, shape, or form. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Um, it may, may, makes you wish that you guys would have wanted more. Not knowing <laughs> the know. story now, it's just yeah. like Jesus, yeah. And I wish. Well, so when, Jesus, my God, like that's the thing that 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 you know it hurt. Like to you in obviously losing a final, knowing how tough it is to get there. You know, like it hurt, and you always like, oh, if I had done this, or if we had done this, at the end of the day, you lose it. Shut up. But, yeah. <laughs> but like, I remember being like, you know, like it, hurt, it sting for such a long time, almost in a way that I was ashamed for the people around us. Oh yeah, right. Like you know, like I really wanted to win it, like for the city, right? Yeah. yeah. And but then I had a signing two weeks after the the, the final. That's pretty. Oh, maybe ten days, and that's pretty much when. It started to turn around for me because I was in, you can ask my wife, I was in a negative space. Yeah. Like not to my family, because the hockey is always outside of our house. But like I had a hard time come, you know, being happy about stuff. I still understood, you know, I had my son, I still understood we live in a good place. We're about to go to Europe. We had a great season, but it doesn't matter. Like yeah. at that point, your head is just going to the negative what just happened, right? Right. And during that signing, it was like First of all, it was sick. 
because it was Vegas made. So like I was on stage with a DJ <laughs> behind me. Yeah. Like there was like waterfalls <laughs> around me. It was yeah. awesome. Right? It's yeah. the best signing it was, ever. Right? Yeah, it was so well organized. And uh, and I can think I, can I stay a little longer? Can I stay? Yeah, it was like <laughs> yeah. a shower. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so I think I had five or six people coming to me and be like, like you know, they come and they shake your hand and like, but. These ones came and came really close and really softly said, hey, I know it sucked. You lost it. But I was a recovering addict. I tried to take my life six times. Because of you this year, I have a job. I'm working to, to be able to buy tickets to go to you guys' game. You gave me a new purpose. And thank you so much. I know you lost it, but you want so much more. And it was like the same story over. Because Vegas is a, is a town of, of vice. That's how it is, right? right. Like, yeah. yeah. People go there and end up being screwed and hearing all of those people kind of like, you know, being in a different mindset, being like, I didn't care about you guys winning the cup. I was just happy you guys brought us all the way there, kind of helped me gaming out. I was like, okay, who am I complaining about? Mm, it was an amazing yeah. year. Just like move on. Just yeah. get stronger, be better next year. Right? Yeah. yeah. Perspective, eh? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. And they went on to win yeah, a couple years later. It was just that yeah. I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah right? Right? A quick break from our sponsors, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Nast. Yes. You love your HelloFresh. I do. I'll tell you what, with the two new sons of mine, the uh, billets that are here, uh, I have a crazy schedule getting back and forth. Um, I tell you what, it makes dinner time easy. There's always recipes that everyone loves. There's over 40 recipes to choose from every week. So there's always something delicious. And I look like a genius and I look like a great chef. <laughs> I'm not actually doing it. But I'll tell you what, man, it, it is it saves you from going to the grocery store and all those little things. You talk about saving time, it does that. Yeah, high quality with so many in season ingredients. You'll taste all the freshness of fall and winter. We all know HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime, but did you know it could also save you money? HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout. So that means you get an easy home cooked meal on the table and more money back in your pocket. Pretty good deal, Nas. It is a great deal. And I'll tell you this, because I know you got a sweet tooth. Don't forget about the desserts they oh. offer. Oh, because they're there. You'll be and dipping in those. Gonna, oh, I dip into them. All day. Oh, they're calling me Chubb Rock right now <laughs> from HelloFresh, but oh, it's God, delicious. Sir. Everything's delicious. All right. Be sure to go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 Knuckles and use code 50 Knuckles for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, that is HelloFresh.com slash 50 knuckles and use code 50 knuckles for 50 percent off plus free shipping let's go nast america's number one meal kit oh yeah i mean fast forward you know from from there you go you go to colorado pretty pretty nice place to play there as well yeah i was sick yeah, yeah. and i mean i was excited to go there because first of all it was the first time that i was like uh going on a free agency market which i had no idea what what it was going to be about yeah. and it wasn't planned like you we were like set on staying in in Vegas and they offered me like a downgrade. And I was like, why I'm having, I had just had the best two seasons of my life. Yeah. And so I, like something didn't work out. And my agent was like, we're going to get demands on the, on the free agency. And I was like, I was kind of stressed about it. Yeah. And then like, it was like 10 teams that showed like interest and offered contract. And I was like, wait a second, I don't get it. I'm a fourth line plug. Like, wow. so Nobody in my head, that's, you know, yeah. so then suddenly I'm like, that was the first time that I had like, okay, maybe I have some kind of value if there is so many. And then like out of those 10, I think seven of them were playoff, like cup contenders. Oh, wow. So I was like, wow, that is amazing. Like, what did I do? Like, what is it? That was... <laughs> What'd you do? You want a lot of face yeah. You want a lot of, yeah. a lot of, yeah. a lot of shots. <laughs> yeah. But then Colorado was one of them. And I mean, from as soon as I heard that they were in the mix, I was like, oh my God. That would be cool. Like, you know, just the, like I've always said, the day I stop learning is the day I'm done with hockey. It has nothing to do with money. It's like how much I have the, the, the drive to just try learning and learning and learning, right? Yeah. And so I was like, 
going to like play with Rantanen and McKinnon and Landeskog and like I was like see what they do why they so good like that's like, that's kind of a chance of a lifetime mm-hmm. yeah uh, well, so, well what so, are they what are they like <laughs> yeah, yeah right. what's it like playing with them they're all three totally different tell you yeah, that yeah. much yeah. like uh, McKinnon is a workhorse mm-hmm it is, as everybody advertises it, a nut job in his way to deal with the way he he put every every percent possible in the winning ways. Yeah. Right? Not really like focusing on the negative, more focusing about like, you know, I need to do this and this and this and this. Then he's like Jordan in a way that, you know, like if you don't do the stuff for the team, you're gonna it's gonna be a nightmare for you. Cause he gives kind of all he has for the team he wants to win right so if you end up like kind of fucking up because you went out the night before or you eat the wrong way well he's gonna give he's gonna give you hell yeah so he's intense this way but like as an older guy like me i'm here first i'm leaving last like i got mostly respect from him yeah Mm -hmm. right a couple fuck you battles actually but more than a couple but like <laughs> you saw me dropping gloves in but practice in Philly, happens. so yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I, it's true. I'm not a perfect person, so it happened. Uh, yeah. But so and then Ranton, it's kind of a, it's more like a clown. Hmm. He's just so freaking good, but like also doesn't take himself that seriously at all. And Landeskog is kind of like freaking natural captain. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I remember when I went there, like you know when I was in Philly, I asked him a few times to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really hated him, like the sheriff, like, like yeah. you know, like that his team was shit, and yeah. like he was always like act like the sheriff, and I he didn't like that one bit. And I had my hot moment in Philly, so I was like, well, but it never worked out. And then when we got together, goddamn, I loved the guy. <laughs> he sure. loved him, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he was so like the way he talked, the poise he had, the, the way he talked. I was like, wow, that was that's impressive. He's younger yeah. than me, but like he can talk. Yeah. So, so I had a good time, cool. man. Like the whole two years were good for me. I played good hockey. I got good teammates on my lines, uh, more skill than I've ever had technically was. So it was kind of like, it was awesome. Yeah. I, we, the only thing is that uh, we didn't win the cup and then they won it when I left. Classic. I, I, I think, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, well, yeah. So let's get, let's go to the next team. Tampa, <laughs> yeah. Tampa yeah. Bay, you go to another great oh, team who, and yeah. they obviously wanted you for a reason. Um, yeah. And but this was more like, a, I mean, obviously when Tampa come to pick you up and they've, they've won two in a row, you know, the team is going to change. Right. right. So then you're like, all right, the team is going to change. That's your chance to come in and like, you know, help the team or help, Everybody showed that okay, the guys that left were big, but then the new guys can do some of the same job, right? Yeah. That's what I, I truly thought. And then also for the whole family, by that time, about year like eight and year nine in my career, like I'm not supposed to be here. A team <laughs> from Florida is coming to pick me up. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Right? So um, from that first day that I had that uh, that father's trip in Philly. When we were like four days in Philly, and I was like, this is not real. This is, I mean, what are we doing in Florida for four yeah. days? Yeah. And I was like, I remember, like, I was like, I will never be able to play in that heat. And then I got the team coming up, and I'm like, yeah, I can do that. I can, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. 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 I can do that. So well, it was good. Different I'm, coaches also. Everything was. Yeah, yeah talk a little and, bit about Coop, Belly, if you don't mind. Like how, I mean, I, I think it's really impressive how. Well, yeah. not only Coop, but the GMs, how they, they find a way every year. to yeah. Obviously, they're keeping that core there, but yeah. to bring it's, guys like yourself in. Yeah, they do a good yeah, job. Yeah, I feel like the, yeah, the, the, the Coop is one person that is, like, is, I think is good for the team. And then you have the GM, like, staff, scout, that are, like, really dialed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, th- I think, I mean, they make some gambles, and it worked every, almost every single time, I'd say uh and they're very poised in their way they talk to you and you don't really like see the gm he's trying to make himself as invisible as possible really like when he comes into the locker room and everything he works as fast as possible so he goes straight to the coach's room and he leaves as fast as possible you can tell he doesn't want to be a part doesn't want to like mess with any of the thing the thing that was the biggest thing with coop is uh how his assistant coach were not just assistant coach right i had that like in um in Vegas a little bit with uh, with Turk, yeah. where like you know like 
anybody can do the uh, the video meetings. But then when I got to Tampa, one of the things that was a bit different is like the video guys were also doing the meetings. Okay. Like we're about to go to the game and like the video guy is there and he's sitting there and I'm like, okay, because coaches are sometimes superstitious, you know it as well yeah. as I do. Yeah. So like whoever wins last game is going to do it. But we lost last game. We went through all four coaches. So I'm like, okay, who's going to be the next one? Like, And there comes the video coach and he sat himself and he's like, all right, guys. And you're like, wait a second. What are you doing talking to us? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, what he gave everybody is that you understand that everybody in that coach's room has the same vision and agree on the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can end up going to anybody and ask about the system because they all do the PK meeting. They all like the power play guy do the power play meeting to the power play guys. But otherwise, they are intangible in all of the meetings. Wow. So you can literally ask questions to anybody about about the system and you will be answered the same way like it's one voice, right? Oh, Which I thought was pretty amazing. And it's obviously kudos to Coop, I think, that you know, that let everybody else takes you know spread their wings and take some space in the into the room also uh yeah. but he was kind of i call it like the like like too soft punch and a hard knock right this yeah. is how he talk to you like he comes and give you like couple praise and then he, he hits you with one in the liver yeah <laughs> because he give you two, you know he, he kind of he's like he give you the one in the liver and then he raise you up like you're good like you feel yeah. good kind of like so i didn't mind that way like it was a different one that I've had before with other coaches, but it was still tr brutally honest because he would tell yeah. you like, oh, I love the way you take the face off and this is crazy how you did this. But then why are you not keeping your guys in the face off when I told you already 10 times? And you'd be like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I got the message. But it didn't bury you down, right? You know, yeah, right? It didn't right. like, you don't feel like you're 10 feet under and you don't know where you're starting to like hold your stick harder because you're like, oh, the coach's mad. Not really a lot of that. Oh, so that was yeah. good. good. How about this Kucherov? Little Different bit of skill. Kind. Little bit yeah, of skill. Yeah. <laughs> this is the same as McKinnon. I was excited to, yeah. to go see it because that's a different player, obviously. He's yeah. a meticulous person. Really? Like it's not about like the amount of work and he's gonna work more than a lot of guys, but it's not in the gym. Like the season is over. After two weeks, he goes back on the ice. Oh, and then he can be on the ice for like like two hours a day for what he needs or what he thinks he needs to do. Yeah. Right. So like, uh, it, it's just, and, and I've seen practice cause I'm on the ice too. And like, it's going to have all the pox and it's going to make like a move that is like with a couple of couple inches move and then fire it. And it's going to recreate that move 150 times. We'll take all the pox and do it a 300 times if he needs to. And you're like, yeah, well, this is not good for me. I can't really do that. Yeah. But then the next day you look at the game and woof, woof, that little move is behind the net. Like he's in the net. Yeah, it's in the net. Yeah. And so yeah. a lot of similarity with, with McKinnon where the repetition where the where the key with those guys. They were doing repetition of the one timer, repetition of the move. Kucherov is just more detailed in a way that like he's gonna get a guy giving three hundred rims to pick up the puck perfectly on his back end and study yeah. how he can pick it up and and after every game, you're gonna he's gonna get the the the, the computer and he's gonna you know look at and replay it and look at it slow replay. And wow. I think it's probably one of the players that I played that has the best idea of what the defenseman that he's gonna play against is gonna do before ah. the defenseman do it. Like he's ahead of the play that way. That's yeah. why sometimes you're like you thinking like, oh my god, he made an amazing move, but he has this ability to be ahead and like just like baiting you into i'm waiting for you to put your stick there and then i'm moving like kind of like that took a bit yeah you know yeah. i'm waiting for you i'm just but you don't know you're getting bait <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah by the time yeah. you're realizing you're naked on the ice and he's hey, go, you're on yeah. right? sports center top yeah, 10, exactly. the, wrong, the wrong way <laughs> exactly so yeah uh, he's but he's same fun as to watch same as all of those other guys that are like on the top, I feel like the common, like the thing in common for all of them is their repetition, man. They just, yeah. you see kids see the highlights, right? Yeah. A lot of the time they don't see all of those repetition, right. like down and down and down. And when you're with them, then the next day you see what they do on the ice during the game and you're like, man, they don't even see what they can do in practice. Right. Yeah. Like, that's the cool part. Yeah. 
Yeah, what you're talking about there too is so important for young hockey players. Like, like you're just saying, 150 rims, like you know, hard pass in the back end, over and over and over again. Like these small little things that, like you know, when you think of practicing hockey, you do like all like the generic stuff, right? Shooting yeah. off the wing and just like standard stuff. But it's all those small little things, like over and over and over again. Like you're saying, it's yeah. just the feel, you know, knowing what to do when you get the puck, and just like it's essentially programming the mind, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 muscle memory, all of that. Like he, like I'm, like I'm 38, so I got with him. I was 36, so I'm already like well established as a player. I don't have the skill set that he has, but like you know, you would think that a guy like him wouldn't have to care about what I do on the ice. And like we're on the ice together, and we're doing some stick handling and everything. And I see him without tape, like you know, without tape with those sticks, it's kind of impossible. And he's like, what do you like? What is it without tape? What are you do? And he's like, well, you know how it is. Like the tape is soft, but if you remove the tape, like if you take a back and pass with with tape, you control it. It's easy. But if I send you a hard back and pass, like pass on your back end without tape, it's gonna explode. So you have to make your hands to receive it. You have to be softer in the mm -hmm. way you receive it. So then when you put the tape after that, your hand your hand are gonna be way smoother. Yeah. And I was like, why not? Uh, so I did that <laughs> for six not? months. I did it, really? and I still do it. I still like on practice most of the time. I go no tape, and then on game I go with tape. And oh, obviously, I don't have hands. So like, but the little percent that I get give me the confidence when I receive the puck to not have to look my. And we all at different like level. But if he does it, how can yeah. it be bad for me to do it? Yeah, right. Hundred percent. Right. Yeah. And this is kind of like this is what I'm talking about. Like you know, learning from these guys. Like it's kind of amazing to be able to play and see what they do on an everyday basis. Cause like if you look at the highlights, yeah, he's gonna have two goals or one goal or three passes, but you don't know like how much work was behind it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. That's interesting. We've got to ask you about Stammer. I mean, he's probably obviously in the same category of, of just, just pro all around, right? I mean, yeah, just, just irritating. I would yeah. say <laughs> <laughs> irritating. Oh, no, like man. man, like I do you know like when I played against this guy, like the PK was whatever system, it was kind of like, you know, kind of like, yeah, like yeah. Hope that Hedy doesn't get a one timer because he will break your leg. And then hope that the other two guys don't see me three times before they score. They can see me two, but three yeah. will make you look bad. Yeah. And, uh, and so the, wait a second, my cat is <laughs> <laughs> on the computer. Uh, and so the um, stammer has like his shot was so just oh. pure and clean that like in practice even if it doesn't go like a hundred percent he would still put place it in a perfect space so it makes you look as a pk error like you're not trying yeah but then you have yeah. share off that is like yeah come hard at me come hard at me and then you go hard at him and he literally undress you yeah and then on the other side you have the guy that just receive it and just hammers it every time mm -hmm. yeah Cool. It was awesome to be on their side. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Because yeah. you know, like the amount of time when I was on the bench and it was powerful. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna enjoy it. Like, just give me some popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Let me enjoy this one. Let me watch this. Oh, that's. But great. like, I mean, all that 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 like heady him point is another one that is just mm -hmm. naturally also yeah. like those guys together is just absolutely amazing. Like it's dangerous, really. And then now it looks like they 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 added Paul. Uh, which is a big guy in front of that, like skill guy. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's a tough power play to play against, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they've good guys. Though, that's the fun part. Like, yeah, that's I mean, cool. I don't really have so much bad to say about my teammates that I've had, like, because I'm annoyingly happy at times. Yeah. So like, <laughs> I don't, but like, all of those guys have been awesome with me. Like, I, so it's, yeah. it's been really cool for me. Yeah, it's it's awesome. I I know Stammer a little bit, and Big Rig. We're buddies with him, uh, Patrick Maroon, and <clears throat> yeah, they're good, just good people, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was Rig, happy. Rig was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, guy. I had Rig. I, I like I liked Rig. I loved him. I loved Perry too. Like, yeah, I had a good time. It was just a different, like, like I I, I keep rem like when I think about us three together is what I comes to my mind is Bogosian. Yeah, always like laughing about the dynamic of that 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 line. Yeah, with me in the middle, which is kind of like you know, kind of a quiet guy. Yeah, and Paddy, everybody knows, and Paris being in the league forever. 
Yeah. As he was like, this line doesn't look like it should work. <laughs> but actually, he, we worked really well. At least yeah. the first yeah. we worked very, really, very well. So, yeah. um, But I had a good time. And they took care of me, those big boys. I didn't yeah, have to right. fight a single time because, like, trust me, uh, you have the, 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 the pest Perry on one side. Then you yeah. have Rick that as soon as somebody bark, he was like, all right, I take yeah. you away. So yeah. it was easy. <laughs> I, I will say this, Belly, that, that just reminded me. Um, I remember – uh, your, I guess I think it was your first year in Philly. We're playing Pittsburgh. I want to say that kid's name was Farnsworth or something. Uh, Farnham. Huh? Bobby Farnham. 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 Yeah, Farnham. Yeah, Farnham. Yeah, right. I messed the name up. Farnham. Uh, I mean, he was just a gamer. He ran around like. Well, you're just like, yeah, I just a rat, fast I, rat. I'm doing too much. Yeah, I yeah. remember Belly just saying, "All right." He goes over. It was a play along the wall. You had gotten knocked. Someone pushed you down so vendy vendy veldy get pushed That's the wrong it. way and i jumped and absolutely missed the guy <laughs> right yeah so i i missed the guy that i was supposed to kind of grab and i hand up with my face and my knee on my knees my face in the board and the only thing i hear i think is like oh what are you gonna do about it you french frog and <laughs> oh, i don't care like i'm from france france yeah, like, that's yeah. not a thing. It's the <laughs> that's Canadian maybe thing. like have issue with saying French frog. For me, yeah, I love frogs. They're delicious. Like it's not yeah. a big deal. <laughs> <They're> delicious. <laughs> but so like he's like he's, he he kind of challenged me, and I'm like, oh well, yeah, I I go you and like I'm sorry, my my charger is like I need to charge my freaking computer. Wait a second. Nobody knows me, like. But I mean, I've I'm an older player, and I've worked different kind of like martial arts just to like you know like karate, like boxing, just to change my practice. Like, yeah. So I was like, com- not confident. But I was like, yeah, I can fight. I'm pretty sure I can defend myself, you know, if I grab the right way. And so I go for it and he swings and he swings and then suddenly I swing and I hit bullseye. Right in the mouth, yeah. Right in yeah. The mouth. And as we fall, like he jump on top of me and he's like, you know, I, as soon as he falls, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to let it go. And then like I scored my first game against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, like I think probably 10 games prior to that. Nobody cared. Yeah. Like some people, you know, like, oh, great for you, Pittsburgh. Blah, blah. I fought against a guy from Pittsburgh. I became a legend. That yeah, right. yeah. I was well, shocked. I, 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 I'll never forget. Like, I didn't I, I didn't know at the time he did you know, yeah. martial arts and shit. So I'm like, holy shit, Billy. I was worried, man. Like, you know, I know this guy's not huge or not, but he's game and he fights. And Billy goes, oh, I, I, I train in the summer. I do. I was like, well, I got yeah. to worry for nothing, man. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, you meant- was. Uh, it was wild, man. I just didn't. That was the last thing I expected. I'm like, yeah, no, like, I mean, I remember Simi coming to me and yeah. he was so excited. Like, you remember, like, you <laughs> yeah. go to the box and I went in the box and then he comes and he's like, big smile. Yeah. And like, he takes too long. Everybody, like, the, the, the referees are like, all right, get out. They're like, man, that was sick. And also, <laughs> that simmer. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah. I think everyone's pumped too to d- dust up Bobby. Yeah. Parkham, yeah. I mean, this guy's a prick. I mean, well, he was, the, the, the one that was the happiest was Reno. Ronaldo, oh Ronaldo. yeah, I bet he yeah. probably chased him around. He had there was something where he couldn't fight. He, oh, he had done something, so I don't remember. It was yeah, it was something so he couldn't fight. And Farnham, I think that was his third, maybe first, first game, and he was without Bucky, <laughs> in between the blue and red, and like crossing, not crossing the red, but like staying there yeah. and looking at like staring down at Jake. And Jake in the locker room was like, "Who is this fucking guy?" <laughs> yeah, Jake, Jake, right. Jake, yeah, right. Like, yeah, exactly. So mad about the Southern are useless. Yeah, like sometimes, and this was a kind of like, who cares about that guy? Yeah, but Jakey was so mad about it, and then he kept coming at Reno, and Reno was like, I can't fight him because I played with Reno, and and I was like, well, if the chance comes, I will. Yeah, <laughs> and he was like, yeah. he, he never, he was like, ah, don't worry about it, Belly. Like you know, you, like you don't have to do it. And then when I yeah. thought, everybody was like, oh, you did it. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. Well, um, I just want to say quickly, like, too, um, like, you leave Tampa, you sign with Seattle. Uh, I think I asked you this earlier, but just um, your thoughts there. Like, was it more, did Hack kind of recruit you in there? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. And also, That's like, awesome. I've always, like, uh, so every time we went to the free agency, we have a, a way to do it with my wife where like okay we put like the the life as a family is one of the ranking the the chance of us you know being able because if you have the chance of being able to go in a team that can win the cup why yeah. not you know the competitive mm-hmm. hockey money is one of them obviously 
And then when we got to, uh, there is one another category that is kind of like the fourth one that we only like use, but it weighs a lot. It's like the one where like, if a team comes to you and talk to you like you're number one on their list, or if you see, for example, you know, like a team that is like, you know, I've seen teams that were coming to me and they didn't sign me. And then three minutes later or four minutes later, there was another player that was signed after I oh, said no. Yeah. Right. Like in this, like all the team that comes first for me, they're, they weigh way more in the list than gotcha. the team that come like, you know, day two, three, four, whatever it is. Cause then yeah. I feel like I was one of their priority and a guy that you invest as a priority you will try to make him better. Mm. That's in my yeah. mindset. The right. yeah, guy that you take as a you know a replacement guy, when he makes a mistake, he's like, ah, we didn't want him. That's fine. Like you know, you kind mm -hmm. of give up on the mistake that he makes, and that's not what I want. If I want to be good for the team, I need to be tell straight up like this is not what we want. Switch this, and I can switch it for the team. I'm okay with that, right? Yeah. So hack came in a way that like you know they came strong, and it sounded like okay, you are number one guy. So that kind of weighed a lot for me. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And also it was hacked. So I mean, yeah, 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 exactly. They wanted me two years prior. Like they, I, like when I got uh, picked by Vegas, I had a long conversation with him. Like, you know, he, that's not what he wanted. So, you know, it was just like everything pointed me back to, to hack. And also it's an, it's a new team, a lot of young players. I could see that, okay, I was going to have to have a, uh, a little bit of a voice in the locker room and talk and like help young guys and maybe show my routine to help. So yeah, everything kind of felt right. Um, yeah. So it was cool. Yeah. It was cool. It's awesome. man. I was happy mm -hmm. to see you sign there and <clears throat> hopefully you get, you get well soon. I know you will. Um, Riley's going to send you one of his uh, oxygen chambers so you can <laughs> sleep and may maybe speed it up a little bit. That'd be uh, awesome. Yeah. And, and I have a, a cooler with some Gatorade in it. I'm no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a new, it's a new Gatorade. <laughs> I remember that fucker. Yeah, you scared the shit out dude, of you, man. Uh, dude, I, I showed a video to my son this year. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, man. And at first, he didn't understand. He thought, like, he thought, he thought what, what would you do that? That's not funny, Papa. <laughs> not funny. And I was like, no, but like, wait, let, let's see the other, everybody, yeah. the whole video, not just me. Let's see yeah. everybody. You see everybody start laughing. You you were a good one. You, yours, you're, 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 pretty scared you and raffle are the, probably the top yeah. two right yeah, well, around lappy the drama. smacked me lappy like jumped oh, yeah. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted <laughs> yeah, right yeah, away yeah, he won the fight i was i mean you 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 hit it so well and also <laughs> like in all my years i don't think i play with anybody that i like to scare guys more than you <laughs> yeah like, i know i are so wrong with me <laughs> no but <laughs> i i loved it you keep you keep you on your toes <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does. my like when I had my shoulder surgery, you remember I had like, I would have to come like seven and do like the rehab yeah. and everything. And I would come in the room and I would like walk on tippy toes, <laughs> the whole thing. Like, and like still there. Like I'd yeah. be like, okay, going through Harry's room and your room, I'm fine. Walking through the corridor. Oh, that's fine. That's the coach's room. Rah! I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we gotta I keep it. keep guys on our. Toes, I still but... deal with this guy. Yeah, Every time I'm showing up time. here, he's hi hiding somewhere. Yeah. He's like waiting from the pop out of the but garbage belly, can. Belly, I, I work for a junior team here, uh, the Philadelphia Rebels. They're in the North American Hockey League, uh, and I get the kids all the time. So they're like you. They're always. The other day, I had my <laughs> camera set up, and we had to prop the side door at the rink open. So I heard guys coming in going. You, nasty's hiding for sure like <laughs> yeah. and, but i still I, I still oh they know oh yeah they know they know so um but hey buddy listen we appreciate your time man hey dude um, before before we leave do you remember because that's a good story the uh the trade store the trade fake the trade prank with you yeah i we did it to lots. I like that's a that's a good story for you guys oh tell yeah tell it tell it tell it tell it so you were involved. So like yeah. the day before, uh, so at the end of year number one or March, right before the, the, the trade deadline. Yeah. So I, I was in conversation with the team because a team had requested a trade. I think it was the Rangers. Okay. Right. At that time, I played good PK, everything. We were not going to play off, right? Yeah. So that like six days before, less than that, maybe four days before the trade deadline, I get called by by my agent and said, "Hey, like 
a team is requesting a trade, they're going to trade you if you don't sign. Like, they want to keep you. So I'm like, yeah. oh, well, um, it's like awesome. <laughs> like, it's yeah. not the bad news. So we negotiate everything. And the night before the trade deadline, I signed. Like, we we, we okay with the, we, with the contract and everything. I come the next morning. And you know how it was in Philly. Like, we were not doing always so well. Right. So, like, you mm-hmm. always had pockets of guys. You know, you could see they start stretching together and then start talking about the trade. And they start getting nervous for the future, which then eventually made you play like shit in your present, which would create <laughs> yeah. your future pretty much, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but you had those pockets that were happening. And so, RJ Amberger was number one. He came. He wasn't, he was safe. He had a long term contract or whatever. And he's like, hey, Belly, uh, just so you know, uh, the GM, uh, Asked me to tell you that you have to go see him this morning, like with a serious face, right? So I'm like, mm. okay. But then, ten seconds later, I come into the room and Jakey, before I checked, he's like, "Hey, belly, belly!" Like, and you could tell, like, you know, he's got, he's not smiling, but he's in his eyes, I can yeah. see now. Yeah. And uh, he's like, "All right, um, like Hexy wants to see you in the office right now. Like, you gotta go up quick. Like, man, uh, I hope." I hope it's I hope it's good, man. But like, you know how it is. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and and I like, he's leaving. I don't have a time to say anything because he's trying to not break into character. To break yeah. character, so he leaves fast. At that time, Giroud comes, and I, in French, I'm like, hey, G, like, what do I do? Because Jake and RJ tried to kind of prank me, but I, I actually signed yesterday. So they were both like, I have to go upstairs to actually sign the paper. So. Like, geez, like, handshake, I'm so happy for you. He's like, all right, all right. So go upstairs and sign the paper, take a little bit of time, come back. I don't know, put some water on your eyes, you know, yeah. act sad. G goes to see you. Yeah. He's like, hey, can you pack Belly's, uh, go into the locker room and pack Belly's stuff and put it in the middle. All the guys are going to arrive to get dressed. Let's just yeah. have Belly's bag with his sticks and everything. And so... I I uh, I go upstairs. I sign the papers. Right, it's it's yeah. a great day for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I come back down, and you know how it is. You come back down. You have that little door, and you had like the the tub. With yeah. The, the medical room. Yeah. So I'm passing in front of the tub room, and Jakey was in the hot tub, like coming out of the hot tub, and he's like, "Hey, Billy," and I'm like, "Not now, man. Not now. I don't need. I don't need this now. Like, it's not funny, man." <laughs> and so he's like panicking. I can see his yeah. face changing yeah. color. So then he goes to see Jiru. And G is like, yeah, Belly got traded. And he's like, man, it's my fault. I shouldn't have said that. Like, I didn't know. I was kidding. So I go in the room. I'm taking as much time. I'm opening my stall. And I'm kind of laughing in the stall because I, yeah. like, I know. And I come in the room. And as I come into the main room, all the players are there. And Jakey is at his head down, man. He's like, yeah. you can tell he's looking at my face. Like, yeah. he feels terrible. And then you come in the room. And you're like, hey, Belly, so... Do you want all your stick or do you want half the stick and we can send the rest over after? Yeah. And as you say that, I can't keep longer. And I'm like, no, I'm <laughs> yeah. good. And then JK is like, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, gee, everybody know but him. We reversed man, it all. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. Uh, dude, how you say that, that's awesome. I forgot about that, man. It stayed, it stayed to this day one of the story I tell, like, everybody. Because, like, uh, it's kind of a prank environment, right? You just yeah, prank of course. each other yeah. and, like. And I love this, and like I never had the idea of obviously it's Jeru's ID, but like I also like our relationship with with Jake got stronger. Yeah, because yeah. like like I liked the guy, he liked me, like we carpool yeah. all the time, like so it was so fun, and we we're like so man, it was fun, man. Yeah, yeah that's I, I I real real quick, Belly, we'll let you go. It's probably dinner time. Kids are ready. I have to go make my pizza though. I I made pizza though. Early oh. today, so I have to go and roll the pizza doughs. Healthy, pizza. healthy, that's right. Hel- that's right. healthy, healthy pizza dough. Um, I was telling Riley. I I think if you want to tell him this <laughs> real Dude, quick, when you were, me. what's up? What's up, buddy? Um, the uh, when you were over, I don't know if it was at a World Championships or you guys were trying to in oh, relegation. Yeah. But you tried to go in the locker room. They had the bathroom, and the door went up and down. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's. You, yeah. So this is this is a so it was okay. 
Thank you, Nando. Um, that was in China. So obviously for China. North American people, like World Champions in China, they were like, okay, how bad were you guys? Pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so that was the year before we got back to the main World Championship. China had gone up from the the third string division ship, like World Championship. Yeah. And uh, we were in the second, so they had gone up to the second, and they got a world championship into China, right? So we go yeah. to not the China that everybody knows. This is Chichihar, like uh, 100 miles away from the Mongolian border, like up north, man. Oh, this wow. was real China. So like the door of the bathroom so had a, a sensor. like So every time you wave your stick, the door would just open. Like, it was one door, singular door. <laughs> the thing with that is that... There was no toilet. It was a hole in the freaking floor. That's what it was. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you need to go to the shitter. It's a hole in the floor. So, but the floor is marble. So, you have to put your your your, your skate guards to go yeah. there. So, it, during the games, like, not an easy situation. I can tell you that much. <laughs> so, like, a few days, I went there during practice. And guys would just, like, you know, they would. And I would be just, like, either washing my hands or whatever it was. Yeah, but then, yeah. That day, there was one guy we decided before the World Championship, every time he goes, we're just fucking with him. We're going to keep that door open at all. Yeah. <laughs> and so one game, it, like, bear in mind, once again, we're in a, in China, and the food was not the food that our digestive system was used to, so we end up having kind of the runs, everybody. Yeah. And that guy is running with his gears. But the only way to go do number two is for you to do a squat, pretty much, but a long squat. But, like... He couldn't go when guys watch saw him. Yeah. So like <laughs> so as soon as he moving. went in there, he went down in the squat position, and we start waving the sticks. This is mid game, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> mid game. <laughs> and so he's trying, and he's starting to get like complain. Then suddenly we realize like he's sweating because he's been in squat position for a good like six seven minutes trying to push this thing out, but it's stuck. Uh, so yeah, this was. This is the different than what life in the nhl is I can't yeah, much. yeah this is why i come every day and i have a big smile on my face there and i go. enjoy our locker rooms and i take care of everything because man you have no idea the amount of stories i have about like <laughs> oh, before pre nhl yeah oh, it man. just I, was a different world I, man. I never forgot that when i laughed Boy. get real toilets yeah yeah right there. can we get yeah. some real toilets but, wow uh, that's incredible man. Belly, get to that pizza, though. I want to thank you again, man, for your time, bro. Yeah, man. Miss you. I hope, Love you. Uh, I hope that was good enough for you guys. Oh, uh, yeah, man. It's beautiful. Um, I was a pleasure to be with you guys. I mean, like, sorry it took so long. Oh, no. No worries. Uh, but uh, I do, when I'm at home, I do disconnect with uh, the hockey world quite a lot. Yeah. yeah smart. And, yeah. and I'm good at being at home. I'm trying to be, like, on the moment. Uh, yeah. So I apologize if I missed you guys for me. Oh, no, buddy. not at all. all good, Thank you for trying again because I'm really happy I took the time to be with you yeah, guys. Me too. Me too. Thank you so much, brother. And Thanks, get brother. well, man. Get well. I yeah. know you will. It's just a matter of time. I'm eating the right way. I'm sleeping the right way. I'm doing everything correctly. So it's just a matter of time. There you Before go. you see me put like another, like, you know, two goals to have a great season. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, all I required. Two more than I That's have. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. All right, brother. Well, take care of yourself. Thanks, Belly. Thank you. Thanks so thank much, man. Thanks, guys. Big thank you to our friend Belly, Pierre Love Edward Delmar. Man. What a nice guy. Yeah, man. I know, right? I mean, Salt geez. of the earth. I just, I know we talked about it, but I just remember meeting him and like, what? Like, just what a good man. Yeah. Every day coming in and say hello, always happy. He was so thankful. Like, I was saying, like, it was a guy, you know, a lot of guys are very thankful to play in the league and <clears throat> play pro hockey, but man, he was just. He loved every day of it, still does, obviously. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, 38 years old now, but he's in great shape. I remember, like, when he was a rookie, and I'm like, dude, like, you're in better shape than the 21-year-old. Like, he was just in that good of shape all the time, and he can skate. He's a smart hockey player, so that's why he's still playing, obviously. You get the dad dad strength. Yeah, you yeah. Coming in as a mature man. And yeah, well, that's obviously true. Obviously, how many years he played pro there. Yeah, right. Before, he played so. over there, but, uh, yeah, great guy, man. Love Belly. Appreciate yeah, it. Wish him the best. Yeah, man. Maybe you squeeze a couple more years in and play yeah. over play over 40. Could you imagine? I could see it. I can see him doing it. I mean, he's really good at his job. He is. He's very good at it. So unless he can find a young fourth line center that's as responsible as he is, and 
he's good in a room too. Yeah, like, exactly. he does so many little yeah. things, but mm -hmm. uh, you're right. Yeah, it's tough, man. When you start getting, you know, they'll take kids, but who knows? We'll yep. see. We'll see. Great guy. All right, now it's that time. It's time for the Clear Rum questions brought to you by clearrum.com slash shop. You go there, put in nasty 2023, and you get 35% off your order in PA only. You should have seen everything I had here for Christmas. Three Except load. I had to keep these. Oh, they're all gone. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. It was gone. Holiday spirit, man. <laughs> Holiday yeah, spirit, you got yeah, yeah. to hydrate. Why well, dehydrate? That's right. Um, yeah. Put a shift Get in. there. Again, that's 35% off. Woo. Got to take it. Got to do it. Delish. Delicious. So I think you're, we're ready to rock here. Let's do it. All right. We got Quinn on Twitter. He wants to know, Nasty, what the World Junior is going on now, what are some of the best memories working international play? Ooh. That's a good question. That's a great question. Um, man, I was fortunate enough to do a lot uh, of uh, international stuff, man. Um, the Olympics were the highlight. I would say like that was every time I got to do the job with USA, which was about five times, I think um, I always enjoyed it. But the Olympics was just a different animal. Like it was just, I remember walking out on the bench I knew I was there, you know, I'm in the, you know, like where we're living and everything in the village. And so when we finally got, we went over to the rink and you, you walk out to the, I remember walking out to the bench and like, there's Olympic, the rings. You're just, I was mm -hmm. just like, wow. Yeah. Like, I can't believe this. Like, I know I wasn't playing, but just to be a part of it and you watch the Olympics your whole life, like every, every oh, year yeah. it's on, you're watching summer, winter, but it was the biggest thrill I've ever had. Oh, yeah, I bet. And we won every game, and I know we've talked about it a hundred times, but we won every game to the gold medal. Ryan Miller Triple. was unreal. I mean, the whole team was great. Yeah. I mean, it was a really good team. And Millsy was unbelievable. And then, you know, Sid gets the, the golden mm -hmm. goal. Golden goal. My heart sank. Yeah. But uh, great time. That's a great question. Um, Yeah, definitely the Olympics were probably 2010 Olympics yeah. in Vancouver. I heard that it it's probably pretty nice over there. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the street. He says. Wow. I was watching it. From I've got my, yeah, I've got my, <laughs> my pass from it. Uh, I obviously held all my, all my credentials and everything from there. But uh, I'll tell you what, a little pigeon like me, I got in every place I went. All you had to do, you had to Ooh. hide it though, because they were like, they were some people, people were were ripping it off. Yeah. So I always had it tucked in and I had my big jacket. I'd get to the door, you know, people were like, oh, I get a lot, you know, like, because they closed the streets down. Yeah. And this was for two weeks straight. Yeah. And you just pull that just thing out. They're like, your... Whoop, let's go. A little street cred. That so was nice. I don't yeah. know if I had street cred, but well, I, was, I was getting yeah, in the door. The Olympic I was getting in the door. Um, yeah, it was awesome, man. What a time. Jeez, Beautiful. It was so much fun. Great question. Thank you, Quinn. Yep. Mick Pohl on Twitter asks, Nixie, who do you feel was the best at calling a game? I love Doc, but for me, it was Gary Thorne paired with Bill Clement. Oh, man, that's a, that's a great yeah, question, too. It is. I gotta, I love Gary Thorne also. I mean, I don't think you go wrong either way, mm -hmm. but I wonder if Mick Pohl ever heard Doc and, and uh, Clement because mm -hmm. they used to do it on Prism. That's right. Way, way back. Yeah, then, yeah. way back. Um, and they were great. I just, I love Doc because I love all the adjectives he would use. Yeah. He never used the same, I feel like he never used the same word, you know, like he dribbles the puck in, the, the, in you know, yeah. across the blue yeah, line. He just creative. every, yeah, very creative. And man, uh, and you talk about and, and so fluid. smart too. Yeah, and he was around the game so long. Um, all the stories, like what a, just a good man. But I do, I, I will say Gary Thorne. I love that guy calling a game. Yeah. Um, but I would go with Doc, me personally, just because I've known him since I was four years old. And um, I, I love Doc. Yeah. I think I can remember Doc a little more than Gary Thorne. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like them both, but right. I think Doc, it just lingers in my memory a little more with yeah. Bill Clement going back to the, all the game, like, the, you know, the Sega games. Yeah. I believe yeah. before I even knew Billy, you know, his yeah. voice is etched in my memory, but yeah. Great question. Yeah, really good question. All right. We got a DM, Burke Hockey, on Instagram. Asks, will you be adding products and different colors to the merch you sell? Nah, Ooh. that's you. Well, yes. And we're we're in the process of um, any color you want, we have, right? Like whatever logo, color sweatshirt, however you want to do it. We do have... 
we're we're figuring out a way to put like the colors available basically but instead of putting a hundred pictures on the site right like um we probably should have done that from the beginning but uh <laughs> not text we also that. no it's not that it well before we were outsourcing it yeah now right. we have a guy doing it here right um so we have more inventory of different colors that's all i mean like so if you say hey i want a yellow sweatshirt with nasty nut with nkhc or you want it the fist logo basically the bottom line is let us know what you want nasty got you covered we got you covered love it 100 percent. all right and we got one more we got one more nasty okay construction kurt over on ig wants to know how many subscribers will it take to get Cote to trim off the beard. Yeah, see? The people are asking for that. Oh, they're just... They no, want, they no, want, they want it. <laughs> I can see why they, they want they, it. They it's, want it. We get two new subscribers. Two? Nah. What is that all about? 20. Let's go at least 2K. 2K? Well, we got to make it... That thing will never... That'll never get shaved. <laughs> I'm <laughs> what kidding. are you talking about? No, I, see, I say we get two new people two. to join in by tomorrow. You can do frosty tips. Yeah, we trims it. I'll do frosty tips if you let me shave your beard. All right, right off. Not off. Just trim it. Like, like what? Like a quarter inch? <laughs> quarter inch. That's like asking about Bush's pad. <laughs> no, not a quarter inch. All right, well, a we good talk. inch and a half, two inches. We're talking about, it, but it's certainly more than two subscribers. All right, five. It's got, it's got, it's got to be a little more. Great questions. I, I yeah. know the people want it. Trim. Sounds like it. They do. Construction Kurt. <laughs> Can't Kurt, wait. I like you, Kurt. <laughs> you can't wait. I know. That's a wrap, Nass. That's it. Clear questions in the book. In the book. In the book for 140. 140. Can you believe it? You know what next week is? <laughs> 141. Yes. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Pretty strong. Yeah. You're, sure. you're smart. Yeah. You're smart man. Well, until next week for 141, be sure to subscribe, comment, ask questions. Great questions this week. Yes. Until then, stay safe, knuckleheads. See ya.